Welcome to It's the Economy. The Reserve Bank governor yesterday hinted that the May CPI numbers may be lower than the April CPI number, which itself was below street estimates. Uh, it came in at 4.7. If you remember, the street was sitting at 4.8 to 4.9. Now, if the governor is right, then CPI this year may undershoot the current Reserve Bank forecast. Now, taking this cue from the Reserve Bank governor, CNBC TV had even polled economists on their quarter one and their full year CPI estimates. We found that economists now expect the April, May, June CPI to come in at 4.6% versus the Reserve Bank of India forecast of 5.1%. And the full year CPI to come in at 5% versus the Reserve Bank's 52 Now, if the quarter one CPI, that is April, May, June, is going to average 46 it is 50 basis points lower, half a percentage point lower than the Reserve Bank's forecast. So, as they go into the June or the August policy, should one expect a rate cut sometime soon? Uh, in calendar 2023 itself or even in FY24? The swap market is already pricing in a cut in the December policy. But uh, what do economists think? What's the rationale joining me? In this discussion are Sonal Verma of Nomura and Indranil Sengupta of CLSA. Sonal and Indranil, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Uh, well, uh, Sonal, uh, what's your sense? Uh, I think you've, you've, you are among the lowest, lower in the street in terms of inflation expectation. So do you think, uh, will you stand by your number and when do you expect a cut, if any? <laughs> Yeah, Lota. So for FI24, on average, uh, we're expecting inflation at 4.8%. Uh, uh, so that's about uh, 40 basis point below the RBI. Um, so as you said, uh, Q1 itself is tracking uh, around, uh, you know, 60 odd basis point below the RBI's forecast uh, of uh, 5.1. We think it might end up being closer to 4.5%. Uh, that's uh, mm -hmm. quite possible. Um, and I think there are a mix of demand and supply side forces at play. Um, right now, what we are seeing is more of the supply side factors cooling off. Uh, okay. And I think what we will see uh, going forward is really the impact of uh, slower demand uh, also on uh, core inflation uh, momentum coming off. So uh, we do think uh, that means that the pause from the RBI is set to continue uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, and in our projections, uh, we think the rate cut cycle will begin from October onwards. So for the second half of FI24, uh, we are building in uh, 75 basis point in cumulative uh, rate cuts. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, you're not alone in expecting that it will be 4.5% average in April, May, June. Uh, there are at least three or four economists who are coming very close to that number. Uh, Indranil, what is your Q1 expectation, April, May, June? And uh, therefore, when would you uh, pencil in a rate cut? So, uh, you know, base case, uh, we are looking at 5.2% inflation for the year. And oh. uh, I don't remember the Q1 exactly, but... We do expect a 100 basis point rate cut beginning October. So that's the base case. What can change dramatically is an El Nino occurrence. And if you mm -hmm. see the Southern Oscillation Index, that has now hit minus 12, minus 7 is El Nino. So if we get an El Nino that starts, let's say, uh, you know, in June, then maybe we'll have a 200 basis point upside to all the inflation forecasts that we currently have, which all, under, you know, assume a normal rain. In such a circumstance, I would think that, you know, inflation would end up averaging close to 7%. And I would shift the RBI rate cut to December. I don't think the RBI is going to, uh, you know, respond beyond a certain point to, uh, to the weather. But if, uh, you know, El Nino pushes up inflation, uh, you know, uh, and inflation to beyond 6%, then we may see, a, you know, one uh, meeting uh, postponement of our okay. October rate cut. Okay. Uh, I, Sonal Verma, uh, there are others, uh, including the governor, who spoke about uh, the El Nino uh, possibility as an uncertainty. The governor didn't necessarily say that it is a hawkish uh, impact uh, or it will push up prices. But uh, you're penciling that in? 
Lata, we are working with normal monsoon uh, right now. I, I think uh, the range of uh, food inflation outcome um, is still uncertain. So first of all is the uncertainty with respect to uh, the severity of the El Nino. As the governor was saying, the IOD may have some offsetting uh, impact. Uh, two, I think uh, if it is indeed an El Nino year, in that scenario, what is clearly more important is when it hits, what's the distribution of rates, what kind of uh, rains across states, uh, which crops it uh, impacts. Uh, and three is, you know, what are the other dynamics at uh, play? For instance, uh, how are global food prices playing out? How does the government respond to this uh, situation in terms of supply side uh, response? So uh, I think uh, there, are, there are actually, a, you know, a lot of uncertainties. Uh, and even uh, if it is an El Nino year, uh, the impact on food inflation and the linkage between food inflation to food inflation, uh, from food production to food inflation uh, is not as clear cut. Uh, there have been El Nino years where food production has gone down, uh, but food inflation has also gone down. So mm. I think it's a risk. Uh, we will have to monitor this uh, in the coming uh, months, uh, but right now uh, cannot really make it a baseline. Mm. Yeah, that's a fair point. Uh, actually, an RBI economist pointed out to me that uh, after all the tremors about uh, wheat procurement, uh, during the February, uh, March months. Actually, wheat procurement is not all that bad. It's definitely better than last year. It's perhaps not exactly mean reverted, but it is much better than expected. Rice, they've actually allowed export. They are that comfortable in rice stocks. So the expectation is that uh, these will be the countervailing factors for uh, uh, an El Nino if that happens. And Ramesh Chand uh, different, uh, uh, pointed out on the channel that uh, India is a little more weatherproofed, uh, and he had some data on how irrigated land has increased. Uh, uh, just to put that on the table. But Indranil, the separate set of factors is how the US uh, uh, yields are moving. A full 40 to 50 basis points higher than first week of May. And only some of it is because of the debt ceiling. Uh, the others is, as you can see, the FOMC minutes. So do you think uh, the Fed's hawkishness or status quoist may impinge on the Reserve Bank's uh, rate moves. So, Lata, just one clarification. I think your ticker mm -hmm. is saying that May inflation is going to get uh, affected by El Nino. That's not the case. No, it's no. the full year. So, full, yes. Uh, Sorry, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, of course. You know, uh, the Fed is an important point, and the reason why the RBI has had to go where it did is largely because of the Fed. Now, our rate cut call, I mean, October baseline again, uh, maybe December, is predicated on the Fed uh, pausing at five quarter. Uh, if the Fed were to go to, let's say, 575, as you know, some people are saying, uh, then you know, maybe the RBI has to hike again. But base case, uh, we think that the Fed pauses here uh, and cuts only you know, from middle of next year. And uh, as the dollar uh, begins to price in Fed cuts, you know, maybe early next year, uh, the RBI will have sufficient headroom to cut rates from October. Okay. No, I didn't get you. If the uh, uh, Fed cuts only next year, but it is in status quo this year, you think that the Reserve Bank can disregard that and go ahead? Yeah, because the rupee will start, you know, the dollar will start to price in uh, rate, uh, rate, rate cuts, you know, uh, as you go, the markets react much earlier. And so the swap premium changes. So, you know, the constraint the RBI has now in terms of the currency will begin to ease and allow rate cuts. Okay. Your sense, uh, Sonal, uh, how would you parse the global factors into the RBI's decision making? Uh, will the, I mean, uh, uh, some is greater than several, as the FOMC minutes uh, uh, are indicating. Some are expecting that more hikes should come, uh, uh, according to the FOMC minutes. So, uh, will that impinge, will that hold back the Reserve Bank? So, I think this, this is uh, more of a near-term issue, Lata, in terms of whether the Fed hikes in June, July, etc. Our house view is uh, Fed is going to be on hold. Uh, 
even in June and July, and that they are done uh, hiking. Uh, but I think the broader question that you have on whether the RBI can cut ahead of uh, Fed, uh, I, you know, it's clearly a very important consideration. Uh, but I would say empirically, interest rate differential as a big driver of uh, capital flows uh, is uh, not a given. And uh, I, I think... Uh, for EM central banks, uh, and particularly the ones uh, that have uh, more than ample uh, FX reserves, there can be a delinking in terms of using the FX reserve buffer to deal with uh, FX issues if it so arises, uh, while uh, you know ensuring the domestic monetary policy response is primarily geared towards the domestic uh, growth inflation uh, dynamics. Uh, so I think there can be, in India's case, a delink uh, between uh, the two, and therefore for the RBI to focus uh, more on local issues uh, rather than just purely be guided uh, by the Fed. Uh, and the other aspect to consider, Lata, is what happens to commodity prices if U.S. is slowing. Uh, mm -hmm. Our view is U.S. is going to slide into a recession sometime in the second half of this year. And clearly, China reopening has not provided the kind of boost people had expected, particularly on the commodities uh, and the industrial side of uh, demand. So it is quite possible that uh, the uh, commodity input cost pressures remain uh, under check uh, and inflation dynamics actually also give even more leeway than we are uh, you know, discussing uh, right now. OK, so you're seeing the repo at what by, uh, say, October? You're seeing it at six quarter. What do you see it? by March and uh, October next year, Sonal? So we have uh, uh, 575 by March of uh, 2024. Uh, and uh, right now that's the um, sort of uh, terminal we have uh, for okay. uh, this cycle. So even by October 2024, we have it at uh, five quarter, uh, 575. Okay. Uh, no, that's quite steep. That means 75 basis point of cut from current levels. Uh, Indranil, you said 100 basis. So you are expecting five and a half by when? So 575 by March and uh, five and a half the next time. If there is an El Nino, then five and a half by March and then 50 basis points into the next year. Effectively, okay. a floor at five and a half. No, but, uh, uh, okay, I'm trying to squeeze some time, uh, Sonal, very quickly. You know, March, the average I'm getting from the few economists I polled is an inflation number of five quarter. Even your own March inflation is, uh, uh, you know, at 5%. Do you think the Reserve Bank will be okay with just a, a 75 basis real uh, rate? And in uh, Indriyal's case, probably the real, positive real rate is going to be lower. I mean, uh, Sonal Verma, you think that RBI will be okay with that? They have been talking about 150 basis difference uh, in terms of positive real rates. I don't think monetary policy can react to sort of spot inflation at any point in time. So, you know, once we get to March 2024, the focus uh, will also be on uh, the year ahead inflation profile. Uh, and on our forecast for FI25, uh, inflation is still around four, is actually around four and a half uh, percent. So um, that plus uh, our view on growth, uh, we are closer to 5.3 uh, compared to the RBI's own forecast of uh, 6.5, which means that if you are right, then the output gap will also be more negative than what the RBI is anticipating. So I think if that if the output gap uh, is negative, there's a downside surprise on growth, uh, and one year forward uh, inflation uh, is closer to 4.5%, then uh, a 575 uh, repo rate, I do not think, uh, you know, uh, can be called uh, uh, to uh, uh, accommodative. Okay. Well, I, I guess that would also be Indranil's numbers, that he's expecting the forward inflation to be much lower. Thank you very much. Out of time, uh, Indranil and Sonal. But uh, this is a very important point that the two economists are putting on the table. Expectations of not just a rate cut, but a 75 to 100 bits rate cut, a 575 repo by March. Now, that should change everyone's calculations on cost of capital, on how they will uh, uh, you know, distribute their resources between debt and equity in the near term and the medium term. I'm putting that thought on the table for you. Thank you very much for joining me on It's the Economy. Chartbusters after a short break.